honor and privilege to be invited as devotional speaker. But it's very, very hard for me because I was limited to give only 15 minutes. Now we are following the facts of the fashion. Our daughters are now using mini skirt. Their short pants are very short. And the devotional is also very, very short. I thought that devotional is the core of our program. So nevertheless, if I may not be able to cook up my 15 minutes, because I don't know what to say for 15 minutes. I've been preaching for 36 years. So first, I would like to say that Montefiore College is not only a part of my life, but is my life. I graduated 41 years ago, 1971. And in my retirement, I produced some materials. Maybe you might, you might be interested. I have audio, video, DVD on family issues connected with others. It is topics good for IEL and evangelistic meetings. And I have another one, I compiled my sermon, if I serve the sermons. So that's also available in DVD. And the other one is, I deal on hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is a principle of biblical interpretation on some texts that are quite hard to interpret. So I choose some text on that. And I brought with me a pin of Matthew College. If you have a person for a souvenir, it is not as big as that. It's only maybe 25 centimeters the size. So it might be interesting. And the other one, after two years, I was able to produce a book that I got the book that I wrote, The Anthony Preacher. It's biographical. Inspirational and motivational. It was printed in Philippine Publishing House and edited by Dr. Jonathan Vettorico. I hope you'll be interested. I have some wild thoughts to share with you. Just all in all. You know, some people who pioneered these wonderful comments were not properly honored. Were not properly honored. See, for example, Dr. Nelson. How do we honor him? We honor him from the mountain, Nelson I, I don't know whether it is fair. Nelson the pioneer, he was the one who brought this mountain to college here. So I was thinking if mountain to college will be kind enough, maybe, the administration building will be named to Dr. Andrew Hall of Building. And the other one is, see for example, our hydro who started with our Richmond, instead of naming a hydro one, why don't we name it to Dr. Richmond Hydro? And the other one, why name it hydro two? Why don't we name it to the first Filipino? who constructed that in honor of Engineer Pontisa. They did not contribute money because we are used to naming if we spend money like this road, like this whatever, if you have money. But mind you, Andrews University, J.N. Andrews was the kid for he had died already one time ago. Why it was honored to him? He did not contribute a single money. So I hope this will be considered. Let us try to look. The first Filipino president of our college, he must be honored. Something like that. Anyway, that's only one thing. Whether we buy it or not, that's not a problem. I'd like to share 
and connection to our education system. What makes the child? The Bible said that the demon is like a roaring lion, walking around seeking to devour. A lion will not directly attack the priest, but will observe who are slow in moving, especially the cows. That is the choice of the lion to attack the cows. Why? Defenseless. Our church have these little cows. Our youth, it is the center of the cow of the people. I'm bringing this because there was a survey conducted by Philippine Daily Inquirer. A survey was conducted to know the religiosity of our young people. This is very interesting. And the respondents were Catholic. That's the good position there. At the age, rather, from 18 to 25, those were the respondents. Correspondingly, the representatives of the respondents. And the leader of the young people that were interviewed were Catholics, Protestant, Iglesia and Cristo, Atheist, and Born Again. Atheist is not included, but I believe that when our young people were also interviewed, I think the answer would be similar. Here is the question. Okay. The question is, would you change your religion? Now, 27% said no. Yes, we are going to change. 70% said no, we are not changing our religion. Third percent is very insignificant, has no decision. So there's already a collateral damage. Twenty-seven percent are planning to change their religion. So in every one hundred, twenty-seven are planning to change their religion. Do you completely understand the teachings of your religion? Forty-seven percent said yes. And 50% said no. The damage there, it becomes bigger. 50% of the young people do not completely understand the teachings of their religion. And the last question, do you believe in all the teachings of your religion? It's very striking. Only 33% said we believe. 67% said we don't believe in the teachings of our religion. Transpose that survey to our young people. It might differ only in the percentage, but there is a damage. Remember, this is already statistics. And all a date says statistics do not lie, only lovers. <laughs> statistics do not lie. Only lovers. Meaning to say, we have to cling on that, that it is happening at our church. It is happening that many don't understand. I wish that all these values are transmittable through genetics. I wish that the Filipino folklore is true. Wak wak silanay, wak wak statay. Kami kami mga anak man, wag wag kami tanan. If we transpose that, Adventist si tatay, Adventist si nanay, kami kami mga anak man, Adventist kami tanan. That is not happening. We are losing our children. We are losing our young people. Because it doesn't follow. It doesn't follow. So, what makes you a child? Briefly, I would like to give a review. Heredity environment and training. And I would like to be rational, neighborhood, and rural or metropolis. In choosing a residence, I have a piece of advice. Kung wak pa mo magpalay, kung magpalay mo, palay mo sa palay ng Presidente Duterte. Kaya manugay din yung anak, magkamunan ang mga malikas. 
You will work. Can you do it? Stop it today. Hey. And advertise in the rural areas, comparing to the metropolis, we were research leaders, we pastors. And we know the religiosity of our brethren up in the mountain. And the training, the church, the school, and the home. I will do it on that. So, here it is is very, very important, but I'll be rushing that. I'll just escape on that. Because according to study, 40% of one's personality is genetics. That's why I'm saying to the church, every church that I visited, addressing the young people, I'm saying, if you choose a life partner, choose a CPA. And the young people are saying, CPA is very rare. No, CPA is just in the corner because my CPA is certified pure activist. <laughs> Transmit this to our young people. We're losing our young people because of marriage to non believers. I'll stay with that. Mount Chicken said, Revolutionists are not born, we are made. Many, many years back, Mount Chicken was my God. He said, Revolutionists are not born, we are made. And he, I can transpose that to our children. I must say, obedient children are not born, we are made. How the obedient children are made? Heritage, environment, training. And training has three pros. Home, church, and school. Therefore, there is no such person as born at the distance. He is only born in an Adventist family. We are going to make them as an Adventist. They were not born at the distance. You look at the real children. Up to preschooler, they're very loyal to their parents. When they started going to school, they're loyal to the teachers. And when they're in high school, they're loyal to some peers. And when they come in, sense of independence. And when they're married, the real thing is with his spouse. Why I bring this? Because if we want that Adventist values will be transmitted to our children, then it must be reinforced with Adventist education. Because the loyalty of our children is variable, very short, only with parents, with peers, with teachers, and sense of independence and response. Therefore, my advocacy, wherever I go, is to encourage our church members to sell their children to Adventist institution. I'd like to escape that. You know why I organize these thoughts? I was challenged. A few years back, when we were invited to conduct a happy family seminar in Kuchi, Malaysia, we were brought to our academy. An academy that was closed, but partly open. The academy is named Ayurmanis Academy in Sarawak Street of Malaysia. I was not able to get the present situation of the picture because I became emotional. Because the high school was only open up to primary and the rest were closed. I asked the church leader, what happened to this? He said, if we're not going to operate even primary, the government will take back the property. And why this was closed? He said, Iron Manis Academy was a dream of every Adventist 
in Malaysia, particularly in Sarawak. In the land of these parents who are still in the children, Fire Manis Academy. It was a field for students. The buildings were good, beautiful. The auditories were so nice. But when we went there, the Amosiko were already up to our waist line. The vines were climbing to the windows. The trees, the shrubs were covering the building. I asked the church leader what happened. I am sharing with this. The church leader said, when the economy of Malaysia was yet not good, the Adventist and non Adventist said the children by months. But when the economy of Malaysia grew up tremendously, the government built is for buildings that are beautiful and offer free school bus, free tuition fees, free school supplies, free snack in the morning, free snack in the afternoon, free lunch. The church elder said, who is the Adventist loyal in Sydney to our Manus Academy with the government? is giving everything for free. I don't know because we are traveling throughout the country, sometimes in training. But this is what we have observed. Can I be talking about you? The president of the university? No, no, no. But let us be ready. The bell, 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 with the government started constructing school buildings up to the finish. Water tank up there, four water tanks. Water system is already good. Well planted facilities are good. This is what happening today. The bill, bill, bill of the government authorities. And what is that to us? I am thinking that if we are not careful, I am is already will happen in our country. How can we compare with the government which will be offering free? You look how college we are suffering now. We are only fuel for diners. Why? They are in state colleges and universities. Because in state colleges and universities nowadays is free and they are receiving monthly allowance. Monthly allowance. Well, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. This is not the signs of the times. Some of our academies were rejoicing, let you, Montico, and Dominga, because the enrollment is overflowing. But I said, that is temporary. When the government is ready to take all the students, what will happen to our school? You know what? As I'm talking with you now, I don't have a solution. But the only thing that I can do in my ministry is go back to the church. Let them understand the value of Adventist education. God were the days when Adventist from the soon beside us and in the now, flock together in Bagotas, in the Lilayon, Aruba Kapai School as one of the college. Almost every month, every day, my friends coming from different corners of the country, na malin. Karun, nakakita pa mong mga eksona, na malin, kaya mong pag-eosis na. Wala na. This is a threat. And we must be ready, as I said, what I can do is to go to the church and let the church understand what is the difference of Adventist education compared to free everything. Can you pray 
When I was a director of South Federal countries of ESI, I brought my delegates to Indonesia. We took a bus. Nagbiyahe na yun ay pabahaw. 3 o'clock in the morning. 7 o'clock. Nang mata na ang delegates. Pastor, gutom na. Oh, okay. I'll ask the driver. The problem is that the driver can't understand a single English. So we talk in Sydney. Friend. The driver is not. He goes, so now, you know. Nga mo talaga, alasutso. Pastor, alasutso na. Friend. Nga mo talaga sa baby. Parang insa na sa lang. Ano mo na hindi niya? When everybody is very hungry, the educated will become less educated. Pag kumong rinig sa restaurant, mga ito kano magigta na ng publikano, manindog dito ng lungan at nabuhot ng ispas, hindi ka katao. Basta gutong na tao, malibot ang diploma. So one by one, we went down, and we swarmed to the serving table with the food that our grace was there. No server, no water is no water. Eh, muna ako na yun. Pasto, kung sa kanin? Eh, magkuha ako sa iyo yung gusto. Na-recation dito sa mahal. Kasi yung pekuha sa iyo yung gusto, pinagunay. Pinagunay. We were really lining up, but there was no tension. But suddenly, I saw a woman in the kitchen at the corner. Everybody was scared to come to us because they don't have English. And the woman said, Sir, yeah, how much food, food? The woman said, No money. You know, I'm going to go to the company and buy that now. Who said, No money? Not any money. No money. The maker said, I'm not the lady. Run to the kitchen and brought another young woman. He go, Can you run? Bidyo tinanin ng English kasi nabot tinig niya. Ma, we're going to pay how much? And the secretary said, no money. Buro na niya ako, no money. What is that, no money? Sir, you buy a ticket bus? Yes, food in ticket. Food is praying. Huwag mali mayroon to pronounce. Food is praying. Ino na ako bilang gano, butan ang tagmakampo, makamang tagmampo. Food is pray. So I just, I tried to decide her. Quiet! Ang pagkao na ito na stake it free. Listen, pagkatuhog sa akong delikado na free, mamalik bitaw dito sa green table habit di ko mabiglang sudan. Hurot na nila. Free will be killing our Adventist situation. Free will be killing our program. If the government is ready, just like Malaysia, that's why I am appealing to you, my dear alumni, that we are going to tell the church that there is a great difference of an Adventist school and an Adventist school. Probably you don't know what I'm going to tell you. Karagahan sa mga Adventist, produkto sa Osaka University, na yun sa Moderna. Di ba sabi ko, may mag-recruit ba? Nga po ito buti. Ang mag-recruit din kayo pa naman ko. Mag-recruit ko po ito. O mag-recruit ko fraternity. Maro na ba? Pero ay mag-recruit ng papasahan ko po si Tato ka buti. I'm bringing you this because I have a special burden. I have a special burden along this line. After I wrote my book, I look back what were my problems in life. Nga nung nagugay ko na kanya sa mga kong college, minyon ko. Mga mata na ko na ko na. That's why I learned that only in 1978, pagkatikuhan na na ko, I'm already 74 now. But I can repeat it only in 1971. Nalaman ko. 
because I don't have the privilege in going to our school. My elementary was public. My high school was in the vault, private. But then, when I was already graduated, I made out a strike. I was almost expelled. And when I was enrolled in one of the universities in Cebu, this is where I sat down with the ideology of Mount Chibon. I joined, not the armed group, but I joined the legal group. And mind you, the legal group could never be apprehended because they are legal. I have been in that organization for many, many years. And I prayed an allegiance before the flood of that identity that I will to die. When I came to Mount Ibi College and studied, I was still a member. When I graduated as theology graduate, I was still a member. It was my hallelujah in my life because of my mystery. Katubukin na distrito dito ko kasayin para na ko ipaya. Katuwa dito na ko mga kawana. Inanaw ko. When I went to Ayas, I was still a member. When I came back to Monte College and became a German theology department, I was still a member. I only changed the course of my life when I became Davao Bishop President. When a friend of mine came to my office crying and said, Pastor, I know you. I said, yes, of course, I know that you know me. Pastor, please, get out from that organization. I said, no. Don't you know that even my wife couldn't convince me? I have plenty of religious ready to die for this organization. And then he said, you know what? What if you are apprehended here in the office of the commission? Are you not considering the embarrassment of the second heaven's church will play? That struck my mind. And my friend said, You are used to give a prayer for your visitor, but now don't pray for me. I pray for you. Did speech stand down? And that prayer struck my heart. I started backing out from the door. Gradually and gradually, and eventually, I was already out from the organization. Why am I telling you this? Because the missing link in my life is the Adventist education. Had I been educated in our church school, in our academy, in college, I stayed only here in Mount College for two years. What is two years? Don't you know that I plan to read out a bloody strike in this college? But read my book. Why it was not? It did not happen. God has been two times already attempted. We all the support for people down and up because I'm still connected. But God has been. That was the beginning that I believe that the Adventist education is education established by the Lord. That's why I'm very supportive with this institution. If I was willing to die for my ideology and willing to give my last effort for the promotion of the Adventist education, because I don't want that our children will be deceived by the world. Because if we send our children to other school, there is a big possibility that they will become jumping and we will My goodness. I hope you understand my belief. That's why I said, I might not be able to stop my 15 minutes leaving because I cannot express. The book is a biographical, starting from my birth. And I could have tried all my exploits in the ideology because Dr. Catolico would allow me. And PPH would not allow me. If only I was allowed to write all the exploits 
that I have done for the organization. It's so scary. But anyway, I think that's why, my dear friends, I'm appealing to you. Wherever you are, tell the people in your church there is a great difference of Adventist education and secular education. God bless you all. Good evening to everyone.